So, folks, one thing I think we all know is that there is still a lot of animosity, to say the least, between Lauren and between Marge, that they are no longer BFFs. And that's been a long time development, but it really kicked into hyperdrive with the whole disagreement over McCarthy and all of that. But according to some brand new reporting, this culminated in a fight in a bathroom on Capitol Hill between these two women confirmed by multiple sources and we're going to break down the nitty gritty detail of confrontation and screaming and people calling other people ugly and running away and it's wild but we got to set the stage a little bit to really make it clear that even since the vote Marjorie and Lauren are still fighting it out in public and I also have a good contextual clip to play for you although this clip which you know takes umbrage with the classifying this as a cat fight happened before we got this news of the bathroom brawl. I'm the first one to say that, look, I was skeptical, and this is my perspective, and I don't know if you share it, Marjorie. I was skeptical of the strategy, and I know all the personal, you know, uh, with Wesley Hunt and with Troy Nels and all of that, but I will say I'm pleased if some of these concessions come to, to fruition, I'm pleased with them. Uh, especially the one on the Church and Pike Committee. I think that is just fabulous. And also the promise not to spend in open primaries. Marjorie, thank you so much and can't wait to see. Go ahead really quick. Charlie, it's a fact that Kevin McCarthy was already planning the Church Committee and he announced it before last week. So again, people are taking credit for making things happen last week that were already happening. And people can look that up. You can you can look it up. Look up when Kevin McCarthy announced the church committee. And I know for a fact he'd been talking about it for months. But I agree with you. The church committee is going to be huge. But the negotiations and the fight on the floor, they can't take credit for all of these things. And I think that's dishonest to do so. And but first, let's just go straight to Marjorie Taylor Greene. Congresswoman Greene, welcome to the program. So... I- I want to ask you, you know, we've been receiving a lot of emails over the last over the weekend about this deal that was negotiated and the deal that was struck. I believe it's a good deal. I believe that our friends that were the holdouts, they pushed it to the limit and then they realized that the moderates were getting ready to strike back and they still might strike back on the rules vote. Congresswoman, tell us about this deal and tell us about how we are on pace to have the most conservative Congress of our lifetime. Well, you know, I've been up front all along. Um, I always love a good fight in in our conference, and and I'm never afraid of one, but I always want it to be for the right thing. So I am thankful to my friends and colleagues because there's a few things I like in the package, um, but to be honest with you, they were pretty much already there uh, before last week, before people saw what happened on the House floor. Um, But for the American people to see it happen, I think that was helpful. It brought the the dialogue and the conversations and the agreements that we had made weeks and months before inside our conference meetings, and it brought it out for the public view. So I think that was very helpful, and I'm very glad that happened. Well, it seemed like some of those discussions might have had some expletives maybe. Hard to tell. We're just kind of lip reading from the C-SPAN mm-hmm. video, but it seemed like someone uh, who we thought was maybe an ally of yours, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the congresswoman, uh, and you might have been exchanging some heated words. Do you have any comment on that or is it just heated day at the office? Yeah, I was uh, certainly telling people that they needed to um, leave and and quit trying to use these bully tactics to get us to change our votes. Hmm. Um, There were no explicit uh, exchange whatsoever. I think the American people, no matter how you vote, are sick and tired of drama, and this is nothing but drama. We're, We're on multiple days now with multiple candidates from this group, so I'm not sure how Lauren Boebert on one hand can demand so much out of Kevin McCarthy, but then demand nothing out of someone else and be willing to vote for them to be speaker. That's not serious. Um, I don't think that's leadership, and I really see it as more obstruction than progress. It looked a little messy from home. I understand, you know, usually you make the sausage behind the scenes, which we tried to do. Um, but I'm actually really grateful that the general public got to see how Congress operates. You know, it's usually behind the scenes and you got a front row seat um, to the way negotiations work and how we actually accomplish victories for the American people. 
Um, in my two years there, it hasn't been pretty, but this was the most engaged and the most productive four days that I have had in Congress. Lauren Boebert calls Marjorie Taylor Greene unhinged in the latest escalation of this MAGA on MAGA violence. Now, I want to remind you, there are people responding to this saying, oh, it's a cat fight. It's a cat fight. It's a mildly misogynistic response. Uh, the more interesting story, by the way, though, is not a cat fight story. It's that it used to be pro Trump and anti Trump Republicans. The anti Trump Republicans are still there. Pro Trump has now split into I don't even know what to call it, unhinged and more unhinged or unhinged and slightly less unhinged. And it is very interesting to see Marjorie Taylor Greene try to rewrite her image to now be cozy with power and Kevin McCarthy now that Republicans have taken control of the House. Whereas Lauren Boebert or Bobear, as uh, Ro Khanna refers to her, Congresswoman Bobear, uh, which I don't even know if he's doing as a joke or not. It doesn't matter. I love it. Uh, Bobear is choosing to stay on the more extremist side. This is MAGA and like different substrains of the MAGA. And here's where this bathroom fight gets in. Now get your popcorn ready because I'm going to read a bunch of stuff to you because it is absolutely delicious what went down and apparently a whole bunch of ladies also in the bathroom saw it happen live and it says here the speaker's vote was a lucid manifestation of that different path but the divide has been playing out behind closed doors for months and while the whole world could see the literal space between them during the speaker's vote on January 7, it was allegedly in the privacy of the ladies' room four days earlier where the two really had it out. On the first day of Congress, the mounting tension between Greed and Bobert reached its boiling point. According to multiple sources, the two women were nearly in a screaming match in the speaker's lobby ladies' room just off the House floor. Green questioned Bobert's loyalty to McCarthy, and after a few words were exchanged, Bobert stormed out, a source familiar with the Daily Beast said. According to another source, while in the bathroom, Green asked Bobert, you were OK taking millions of dollars from McCarthy, but you refused to vote for him for Speaker Lauren. The first sort said the first sort said that Green was in a stall and upon coming out, confronted Bobert taking money from McCarthy for her reelection and then turning against him when it came time to vote. The Colorado Republican was allegedly unaware that Green was also in the bathroom at the time. That's when Lauren said, don't be ugly, the first source said before she, in the words of the source, ran out like a little schoolgirl. Asked about the dust up, Bobert simply said, see you later bye she didn't return the daily beast subsequent request for comment and green didn't return the comment either at least one other member is alleged to have witnessed the exchange representative debbie dingle but over the course of three interviews with three different daily beast reporters she would not say what she saw what happens in the ladies' room stays in the ladies' room, Dingle said. Now, it notes below that Dingle did seem to imply in one of those interviews that these sorts of things did happen, but sort of out of respect, he say like the ladies' room is a sanctu like a sanctuary beyond, beyond even MAGA versus regular people. She wouldn't go into detail. But this is what multiple sources are saying. Like, this is wild stuff. Uh, ugly and all of this and it shows that the MAGA movement is not unified like this idea that the MAGAs are super unified and that that unity is going to help them regain power and that even after Trump you know these people have built a sort of community that's going to outlast Trump, you know, but it, th that's not the case. Like Donald Trump is not gone yet. Unfortunately, he's still plodding around Mar-a-Lago, but he was gone from this debate. He wasn't really involved. Like, remember, he, his involvement was over-exaggerated. He was basically absent from this. And we got the first real taste of what the post-Trump MAGA movement looks like. And it's two crazy women fighting in a bathroom.